Marhaban, fourth graders. That is hello in Arabic. It's Miss Mayani again here today, and I'm super excited to get to read with you again. Um, just as a reminder, I'm going to be asking you questions while I'm reading. So some ways that you can respond to those questions are you can write them down, you can find someone nearby to talk to discuss it with, or you can use an imaginary conversation partner such as a stuffy. Today I have brought Hippo to talk with me about the story. Yesterday we were reading the story Flight and we practiced um, using reasons to support our opinions. And in your individualized daily reading, you were practicing rereading and reading ahead to help you um, better comprehend the text um, when you were confused. So today what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be rereading part of Flight and we're gonna be using our uh, opinions and reasons um, to determine the most important idea. We're also going to be using a procedure called Think, Pair, Write. So if you have access to your student response book, page 82, we're gonna be um, recording some of our thinking in that as um, today. So you can use it in the packet or the book. If you don't have it, that's okay. Um, but it, that is something that we'll be using today. I will be stopping and modeling for the first couple, and then the second, the, the rest of the questions, I will um, ask you to write your own thinking. So we're gonna reread Flight, The Journey of Charles Lindbergh by Robert Burley, illustrated by Mike Wimmer, and, um, published by the Developmental Studies Center. It is 1927, and his name is Charles Lindbergh. Later, they will call him the Lone Eagle. Later, they will call him Lucky Lindy, but not now. Now it is May 20th, 1927, and he is standing in the still dark dawn. He watches rain drizzle down on the airfield and on his small airplane. The airplane has a name painted on its side, Spirit of St. Louis. Lindbergh is nearly as tall as the plane itself, and yet he is about to attempt what no one has done before, to fly without a stop from New York to Paris, France, over 3,600 miles away, across the Atlantic Ocean, alone. So here I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna think about the most important ideas. I'm gonna share them with my partner, um, Hippo, and then I'm gonna write them down. So let me think about what do I think are the most important ideas so far in the story. Well, Hippo, I think the most important idea that I've learned so far is that Charles Lindbergh is about to do something that no one has ever done before, and that is fly nonstop from New York to Paris, France. He climbs into the box-like cockpit that will be his only home for many, many hours. He clicks on the engine. He listens as it catches, gurgles, and roars. A few friends are here to say goodbye. They are only a few feet away, and yet to Lindbergh how far off they seem. They look up at him and wave. Good luck. Keep safe. A telephone wire stretches across the far end of the field. To touch this wire will plunge the plane to the ground. There is an extra fuel tank in the front of the cockpit. Because of this, Lindbergh cannot see straight ahead. 
Will the spirit of St. Louis, with its over 5,000 pounds, rise into the air? To keep the plane lighter, Lindbergh is leaving behind his radio and parachute. Will that be enough? He has been up all night getting ready. A thought runs back and forth through his mind. It is still possible to turn back, to return home. And yet another thought is stronger. I have been waiting my entire life for this. Lindbergh lowers his goggles and nods his head. Go! Men on each side push to help the plane roll over the soggy ground. The little plane bumps forward, gaining speed. The wheels leave the ground, then touch back. The plane seems to hop, taking its last bow to earth. On the third try, it stays aloft. It soars above the wire by only 20 feet. The spirit of St. Louis rises in the air. It is 7.52 in the morning, New York time. Lindbergh points his plane toward the Atlantic and beyond, toward Paris, over 30 hours away. He gazes down in the morning light, how far off Paris seems across the long ocean. He plans to follow the coastline, flying northeast. The land's edge looks to him like green fingers pointing at the dark sea. To see ahead, Lindbergh pokes a small homemade periscope out the side of the cockpit. Sometimes he flies very close to the water, just 10 feet above the waves. Waves. He knows that at this low height, the plane glides more smoothly. The plane drones on. It cruises at about 100 miles an hour. At this rate, he will have enough fuel to reach his destination, but only if he stays on course. Beside him in the cockpit is a little book. He keeps a diary as he goes, all day long, hour by hour. It is as if he were speaking to himself. He wants to remember everything, because no one else will really ever know. At 12.08, he flies above Nova Scotia. Just after 4, he flies across above the coast of Newfoundland. At dusk, he looks down and sees icebergs. In his diary, he calls them white pyramids, white patches on a blackened sea, centuries of the Arctic. He wonders what lies ahead. So here I'm going to pause, I'm going to think, I'm going to share with my partner, and then I'm going to write down my thinking about what the most important idea is. Well, Hippo, I think the most important idea now is, um, at first he was a little nervous and uh, afraid and he takes off anyways, and, and now he's just trying to see what lies ahead. The sun sets far behind the plane. Lindbergh flies over St. John's, Newfoundland, the last point of land in North America. Now he can no longer follow the land's edge for direction. He must chart his course carefully. The slightest movement can send him miles off course and risk the fuel supply. He follows two compasses in the stars to navigate. As long as the sky is clear, he is safe, but he must stay awake. He writes, now I must cross not one, but two oceans one of night and one of water. Time passes slowly. It is almost nine at night, Lindbergh's 13th hour in the air. He has completed one third of the flight. So now I'm gonna ask you to think, Pear Wright, what seems to be most important to understand and remember in the part of the story I just read?
He moves through dense curling fog, lit ghostly white by the moon. He suddenly enters a huge storm cloud. The plane shimmers, moving up and down in the uniform blackness. He wonders, can I fly above it? Slowly, he soars up to 10,500 feet. Here it is very clear, but very, very cold. He extends his arm outside the cockpit and feels stinging pinpricks. He clicks on his small flashlight and peers out. Heavy ice has formed on the plane's wings. He cannot risk his instruments icing up. He points the spirit of St. Louis back down. The wings quiver as they slice through the turbulent air. The fog continues, but now at least the air is warmer. The ice begins to melt and Lindbergh roars ahead through the fog and clouds to Paris, over 2,000 miles away. Space and time and deep, deep darkness. It is the other side of midnight, the loneliest hours. Lindbergh has been awake for almost 50 hours straight. He is closer to Europe than America. Now there is no turning back, only moving forward. He dozes for a minute and then jerks awake. One of the plane's wings is dipping crazily. In a sudden rush of fear, he grabs for the throttle. He gropes for the steady center with his heart pounding. As he feels the leveling wings, he lets out breath. He repeats over and over to himself, I must not sleep, I must not sleep. Here, high above the churning ocean, to sleep is to die. So stop and think here. What is the most important idea you heard in the part of the story I just read? Write it down in, on, in your student response book. So we're going to stop there today and we're going to finish the rest of the story again tomorrow. I wanted to take a minute to have us reflect on how we did with Think Fair Right. How did you, how do you think you did on determining the main, the most important idea? Were you, um, if you had a conversation partner, did you agree? How did you feel about giving reasons and um, evidence to support your opinion? Um, in your individualized daily reading today, I want you to be working on um, exploring all of our reading comprehension strategies. So I'm going to post that poster again today. If you have some sticky notes around as you're reading, I want you to stop and mark. When you practice rereading, I want you to write on that sticky note, rereading. When you practice reading ahead, why don't you write down on a sticky note, read ahead. Maybe you practice visualizing. So you could write down visualizing and stick that in the book. Um, I want you to be noticing when you're using those strategies and um, help seeing how it's helping you better understand the stories that you're reading. All right, so that's all I have for you today. I look forward to reading more for you tomorrow and I um, hope you have a great day. I plan to get out into my garden if um, the weather is nice and I'll probably be hanging out with my two cats. And um, so I am um, looking forward to doing that and I hope that you can find some um, fun, relaxing activities to do as well. All right, talk to you tomorrow, bye.